Hey, this is Thing of Thunger. The one thing that the Bigfoot community seems to long for, apart from, say, a living, breathing Bigfoot to study, is for the scientific community to finally get involved, look in some evidence, and weigh in on whether or not they think this whole Bigfoot phenomenon is for real or not. Well, we've got it. And it's from some of the highest authorities in the land, scientists there at the Motion and Gate Analysis Laboratory at Stanford University, using their state-of-the-art facility, have already taken an in-depth look at the Patterson-Gimlin footage. Here's what they found. Before the test begins, the team studies the film. Look at the arms, Bronson. See how they're swinging. His arms are relaxed. There's no tension in his arms. The degree of flexion of the knee is, is a critical issue. Experiment is first conducted without a costume, trying to imitate the Bigfoot walk. And it's a good arm position, and it yeah. stays about like that. Yeah. The gait is a challenging combination of limb movements. So there's three of our scientists. They're studying the footage, and they're starting to look pretty confident. But before we see their results, Let's take a quick look, refresh our memory, see what they're shooting for here. And we've got Patty from the Patterson Gimlin film. And the first most obvious thing you notice is how Patty walks a bit slumped over and crouched down. Look at those legs, neither front nor back ever fully extends. All right, so how did they do? Bronson's performance is awesome. I think he's done a really tremendous job of matching the motion of the Bigfoot video. They nailed it, according to them. So let's just see how precise science can get. And first we'll check the most obvious, making sure they made sure their actor never fully extended his legs. Now, I'm no room full of PhDs. I'm not even one PhD, but that is a fully extended leg. Look at that. And we see it again in this shot, fully extended there, 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 there. So after they missed something that obvious, I started wondering just exactly what did they get right? So here we see the alignment marks that they set up and we see their actor hitting a mark there on the shin. And, and maybe here on the knee to shoulder alignment. I guess that's lined up, kinda. And coming up, we see their actor thrust his knee way up and hit this mark here. But look at Patty, her, her leg is nowhere near up at that angle. At this point, I wondered if the two gates shared any angles, any similarities whatsoever and I thought the easiest way to check that out, I just made this little line drawing here over their actor Bronson, and you can see it follows his body. We've got the angles of his legs here, and here's his trailing leg. Now, since these two actors, I've got them scaled, I, I don't know how tall either is, but I've scaled them to roughly the same size, and I have their walks in sync. So I should be able to take this little graphic I made and drop it on Patty, and it should line up, right? I mean, if if their if their gait analysis is dead on, but y you can see, um, it's not similar whatsoever. And even if I move Patty around and try to f try to find where she might line up, and and she doesn't, so I don't know what. Their criteria was for matching Patty's gait, but th they failed from what I can see. So apart from the scientist getting themselves an actor who did uh, his best Patty impression, that's where the similarity ends. I mean, he hits, if we look back, he hits a mark here and a mark there, so he hits a mark or two here or there as he's moving through the step. But to match Patty's gait, wouldn't he need to hit every mark all the time? And you know, if, if this if if this is all it takes, just just some guy doing the walk, well, they hardly needed all these PhDs and this 
you know, multi-million dollar facility to just kind of guess like this. So did the room full of PhDs just eyeball it and call that good enough? I mean, I seriously hope they put more consideration into actual gait analysis when a kid's health and future is on the line. I will at least give Dr. Jeff Meldrum a little credit. He did at least say, well, even though we were able to replicate the Patterson walk, it took some doing and, and might even be tougher in a monkey suit. You know, was this poor guy just going along with the other PhDs due to peer pressure? Is that the deal? I mean, were they purposely lying to us? You know, did they set out here to deceive us? And no, I don't think so. I hope not. I think what happened is they lied to themselves. I, I think most every scientist out there finds the idea of big furry giants out there running around making us all look stupid, insulting. So these scientists, they came into this test knowing that they were going to be able to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that any fool in a monkey suit could do the walk. But what they've really done here is prove to us that when scientists get together and take a good hard look at something and really put their minds together, they can be as profoundly wrong as any of them. So what am I saying here? That because these scientists failed their analysis, that proves that Pat is a real Bigfoot? No, I'm not saying that. And, and I've never said that once in any of my videos ever, unless I was just kidding. But I am saying, if all of those really bright people can't figure out Patty's walk, then there must be something really strange about it. And it just seems odd that somebody almost 50 years ago figured out this really elaborate walk that can't be replicated now, not even by scientists. Okay, here we have another scientist, one you might already know. This is Renee Holland from the popular TV show, Finding Bigfoot. And she and her co-host from Finding Bigfoot made a clip entitled, How Bigfoot Walks. Go check that out. But Renee is a research biologist who tells us her major was physical anthropology. So she might know a thing or two about gait analysis and how at least we humans locomote. Let's see how she does. Now, Renee is a human. And I'm pretty sure she's walked before. I've seen her walking on their TV show, so I know for a fact she can walk. And surely she's seen the Patterson footage a number of times. So how in the world would a biped like Renee, with that much education, training, and expertise, and observing humans, not know that our arms do not work that way? When we step out with our left leg, our right arm swings out, not our left. She looks more like she's trying to do some new dance step or something anything but a proper biped walk. But I will say this for Renee. She did at least get the crouching down part right and the fact that Patty never fully extends her legs. So score one for Renee and zero for Stanford and Dr. Meldrum. So scientist, what is the deal here? When it comes to this Bigfoot thing, is it such a joke to you that you just completely disengage your brain? Patty's walk isn't just one thing. It's not just thrusting your knee way up while making your shin come up to almost a 90 degree angle, while also making sure your trailing foot hits a 90 degree angle. It's all of that combined, along with making sure that your legs don't fully extend. And then the part that seems to be the most impossible aspect of it all, making it look natural like Patty does. Look at her, she just glides. So try it. And if you can do it, as always, film it, post it and we'll take a look at it like we're doing here. And here's where some of you will say, well, Patty walks that way because she or whoever that is, is walking in sand. Well, that's wrong because here we see an attractive young lady walking in sand in high heels, no less. And do we see her knees thrusting way up? Do we see her trailing shin coming up to a 90 degree angle along with her trailing foot? No, we don't. Her gait for all practical purposes, is exactly like the man's gate to the right of her. And he's walking on a sidewalk in loafers. And so here's where some of you will say, well, yeah, but whoever's in the female Patterson monkey suit, they're wearing big fake feet. That's why they're walking that way. So here we see a clown, big fake feet. And do we see his knees having to come way up to compensate? No, we don't. 
Do we see his trailing shin coming up like Patty's and his trailing foot? No, we don't, not, not at all. So it doesn't matter what's on our feet. It doesn't matter where we're walking. Doesn't matter if we're male, female, doesn't matter. The basic mechanics of a human's walk are the same. So even with Renee here doing her best Patty impression, you're still gonna see where her gait, Renee's gait, more closely resembles the guy over here on the left. So I'll just scrub through. And here we are at the point where everybody's left foot is parallel to the right leg. And from there, things start getting different. Notice the humans, their feet are already kicking forward. Where Patty's, her knee right here goes up. And look, it looks like Renee and the guy, it looks like their step is all but complete and Patty is gonna be way behind. But in the last second, Patty, her foot drops. So all three of the steps take the same amount of time. It's just different body mechanics. Something else out here, what's this little dip that Renee has to do right there? You don't see Patty doing that. So again, Patty's walk is just smooth as silk. She just glides. And even when a human is trying to walk crouched down, there's just extra motion, extra things going on. Any engineer would tell you it's wasted motion and couldn't be kept up for long periods of time. Whereas Patty looks like she could keep that up all day. And it's the same if we had the clown and the sand walker in. Look, uh, full extended, full extended, 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 extended. Uh, crouched, but even at that, uh, let me get up here to where their feet are all the same. Okay, so everybody's foot's in the same position. Now I'm gonna start scrubbing through. And watch the kick that all of the all of the humans, or at least everybody not in a furry suit is doing. Even Renee, their feet are kicking forward, where Patty's is more, her, her leg is kicking up. It's, it's like it's more of a pivot at the hip kind of move. And then a step. Full extended, extended, extended. There, full extended. So it's just different body mechanics for whoever or whatever this is in the Patterson film. What about Bob over here on the right? He's certainly no scientist that I know of, but he is the guy who claimed he was the one in the Patterson Gimlin film wearing the female monkey suit. And Bob has some science backing that statement up. He allegedly took and passed a lie detector's test. So let's put that science to the test. So let's just have a look at Bob's walk. And this is Bob trying to replicate the walk he was doing here in the suit, according to him. And so already we see his legs fully extended. So he's already failing the test. And then as he shuffles through, uh, look at the shape of his legs here, the angles versus here. It's a completely different walk. And for something even more telling, let's do something the lab neglected to do. Let's just do some simple measurements. And here we've got all three. I've scaled them all to roughly the same size, just for comparison's sake. And we'll start off with Bob's shoulder. I've got a line coming off of that. And we follow it across. And we see that when Bob puts on a big bulky costume, his shoulders drop four or five inches. Now, how in the world could that be? Wouldn't a big bulky costume make your shoulders bigger? Anyway, we'll just keep following the line and we see Bob and Bronson here, their shoulders line up perfectly. And now I'll drop in some more lines and we'll come off Bob's shoulder here, or I'm sorry, we'll come off Bob's elbow and follow it across. And when Bob's in the big monkey suit, his elbows drop down to here. And, and if, if I go back, we can see that's his elbow. We see it bending there. How do you make your elbow drop when you've put on a suit or any time? And the answer to that is you don't. It, it's impossible. 
So we'll just keep following line over and we see Bob and Bronson line up again perfectly. Now we'll come off Bob's wrist and we see now his wrist is way down here. And here's where skeptics like to say, well, this monkey suit came with a, an arm extension. So again, we see the arm bending here in the middle and look, we see that the, the forearm is in ratio to the upper arm. They look appropriate together, just like on Bronson here. And if this was an arm extension, this forearm would look way too long for the upper arm. So there is no arm extension here. And now let's look at Bob's knees. We'll come across and even his knees drop when he puts on the monkey suit. You, you can't slide major joints up and down just because you're wearing a disguise. It just doesn't work that way. So we'll follow the line over and we see Bob and Bronson again line up perfectly. And you know, I realize all three of these images are heavily pixelated, but it's not like we're looking for their eye color. You know, granted, we can't see that. All we're looking for are major joints. And for one last measurement, even if we drop Renee in here, and even with her crouched down, trying to walk and trying to move like Patty, we see her body, her, we see her knees lining up perfectly with Bronson, we see her shoulders, and we see she has nothing whatsoever, body ratio wise, in common with Patty. So there you go. That was our closer look at what can happen when actual scientists weigh in on something fringe like Bigfoot. We see they're just people. And even though they may be convinced that they and their peers are 100% right, we see that that's not necessarily true at all. So now it's your turn to weigh in. Do you need a scientist or someone telling you Bigfoot or anything else is real or possible before you'll believe in it? or can you use your own eyes and common sense? And for those of you guys who've had encounters yourselves, you don't need anybody telling you what to believe. You know the truth firsthand. And hey, if you guys like me making videos like this, all of these tests and comparisons actually take me a long time. So please subscribe, share my videos with your friends, like them if you like, and comment. Those things really do help me. And for those of you who actually click on that little support Thinker Thunger button and contribute, thank you so very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. I don't care if it's $1, it helps. So that's it. Take care, everybody, and thanks for watching.